PHP is a language that gives you flexibility to connect and work with different databases while developing your web page. Now there are different databases both commercial and free to use. Amongst them MySQL and MongoDB are the most commonly used databases alongside PHP. On that note, hey everyone, welcome to Simply Code's YouTube channel. I hope you guys are doing good and staying safe. In this tutorial on PHP with MongoDB, we'll understand how to use MongoDB with the help of PHP. Now, after the initial driver setup, we'll continue explaining how to get started with MongoDB driver and use and how to use the extension driver which corresponds to various libraries in PHP to create collection in our MongoDB database using PHP. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed already, consider getting subscribed to our channel Simply Code to stay updated with all the latest tech content and hit that bell icon to never miss an update from us. So without any further ado, Let's get started with today's topic. Now before we uh, get to the execution part of how to use MongoDB with PHP, let us quickly understand what is PHP. Now PHP is a common open source scripting language popular for web applications. Also uh, it originally stood for personal home page. PHP is now a recursive acronym for hypertext preprocessor. And PHP is a server-side scripting language uh, which is embedded in HTML in its simplest form and it allows web developers to create dynamic content and interact with databases. PHP is known for its simplicity, speed and flexibility and many other features that made it a cornerstone in the web development mode. Now more than 80% of all the websites rely on PHP to some degree making it one of the most favored languages among programmers and web developers and PHP is used on most uh, some of the most prominent web properties and platforms using uh, including Facebook, Wikipedia, WordPress and many other more. So I hope you understood what is PHP. So let us now move ahead and understand why we use PHP. Now there are some major benefits of learning PHP. Now one such uh, uh, you know factor is it's an open source language now just like any other databases like mysql which is available to users directly on the internet similarly php is also uh, is freely available to use and implement without any problem it is also an easy to learn language since it is very similar to how uh, html codes are written so if you have a prerequisite knowledge on how html works now the same uh, the similar codes are written in the same manner in php and it is easy to understand and implement as well it is also highly compatible since it can be integrated with multiple programming languages such as html javascript and it also sub supports different databases uh, with, by giving an extension like mysql postgresql oracle and nosql database like mongodb as well it is a platform independent uh, you know uh, database uh, which means that applications developing using php can run in environment also, finally, it has a large community of developers and that is programming is all about helping and being helped, right? So a large community would mean, would mean that you can have an instant help whenever you are stuck with any problem using PHP. So I hope you understood why we use PHP. Let us now move ahead and understand quickly how does PHP work. Now PHP uh, being a server side language, as I said earlier, the entire workflow is on the server itself. So basically we have a PHP interpreter which is installed into the server to check the PHP files. Now while on the client side, the only requirement is a browser and inter internet connection. So if you look at this diagram here, we have a client, a server and a .php file. So basically the client is requesting the web page on the browser. So the server where the PHP software is installed then checks for the .php file associated with the request. So whenever it, if it uh, finds this file, it sends the file to the PHP interpreter. Okay, since PHP as we discussed earlier is an interpreted language which checks for requested data into the database. And then if you look at the step 3 where the interpreter then send back the requested data output as an HTML web page since a browser does not understand a PHP dot file. And once it's done, the web server receives the HTML file from the interpreter in this step 4. And finally, and it sends the web page back to the browser. So this is what the uh, complete flow of how PHP works. So let us now move ahead and discuss uh, in detail like in a nutshell how exactly uh, this is being done on 
uh, you know, on the server side. So the PHP program con communicates with the site server, which is responsible for sending web pages to the rest of the world. So for example, when you type any uh, URL in your web browser address bar, like if you're searching for Google or YouTube, you're basically instructing the web server at the URL to email you an HTML file. And in response, the web server sends the requested file. Now your, your browser reads the HTML file and displays the web page. So whenever you click on the source link on the web page, you are also requesting a file from the web server. And in addition, when you click a web page button now, that submits a form, a file which is again processed by the web server. And this procedure is the same when you are using with PHP also. PHP interpreter interprets the script to access the specific data as requested from the user. Then the server returns the HTML page according to the requirement. So this is in a nutshell how PHP works. Now the main agenda of this session is how to use PHP with MongoDB, right? So MongoDB server is built to already work with your current web server, but not with PHP. So in order to work with uh, MongoDB database using PHP, you're going to need a PHP Mongo driver, which is an extension library. Now, apart from that, we need uh, certain other, you know, uh, you know, factors in order to use PHP with MongoDB. So before attempting to set up a connection between PHP and MongoDB, now a few essential prerequisites needs to be uh, taken care of. So basically you need a DLL file, which is basically a dynamic link library which can be found on uh, Google, which I'll be showing in a while when we get to the installation process, wherein we'll be setting up a PHP and MongoDB connection by installing the MongoDB PHP driver on our system. And also we need, uh, you either you need to make sure that either XAMPP or VAMP is already installed and configured on your system. So XAMPP, we are going to use XAMPP in this, which is basically used to set up your local web browser. And also we need to have Composer, which will basically connect the PHP command line with our, uh, you know, MongoDB database. So we'll get into the execution part in a while. I hope you understood till now uh, the basics of why, of what is PHP and why it is used and how it is related uh, with databases and how you can perform operations by connecting databases like MySQL and MongoDB. So without any further delay next, let us jump into the installation process and we'll see how to, uh, how we need the PHP MongoDB, MongoDB driver. All right, let us now discuss how to set up the MongoDB connection with PHP. And in order to install the MongoDB PHP driver on our system, we need the uh, extension, uh, you know, driver files, right? For that, we will use the PECL. Now, PECL is basically, uh, as you can see, it's a, repo a repository for PHP extensions, which provides the hosting facility for downloading and development of PHP extension. Now, since we want uh, for the PHP and MongoDB, right? So we'll just enter PHP MongoDB. So you can see uh, the first result, click on that, where you can see the package MongoDB PECL. It will redirect to, a, uh, to you to a page and you can see various versions that are available to download, but we need DLL file here. So you can see we have a DLL and the Windows symbol here, right? And also 1.13 is also the latest version. So we'll be downloading that. Click on DLL. Uh, now scroll down a bit. Now you'll find the uh, different types of DLL list here, which is PHP 8.1, PHP 8.0, PHP 7.4. Now we need uh, the, we have also different files here, which is non-thread safe, thread safe, and uh, you know, non-thread safe 86 and all. So since Windows has a 64 bit configuration and we'll use this thread safe uh, option here. So click on this, which is the latest version. It will download uh, depending upon your internet speed. Uh, it may take some while. So let's wait for some time. Uh, it is downloaded now. So in this uh, in this file, we can see various different you know options. We can have we have this PHP MongoDB dot DLL, which is basically the application extension in order to connect MongoDB with PHP. So basically, we'll copy this. All right. Now the next step uh, we are going to do is go back to Google Chrome, and now we have to download XAMPP. 
Now we all know that PHP is the most popular and widely used server-side scripting language for web development, right? So, but however, it requires a web server to run even a locally developed web page. So now there are various web server software for setting up on our local web server. Among them, PHP, XAMPP and WAMP server are the most popular. So we are going to use XAMPP, which is a cross-platform application that can run on a Windows, uh, Linux and Mac OS operating system. So let us now uh, uh, try to install the XAMPP on our uh, system. Uh, so in the search box, type XAMPP, which is Z-X-A-M-P-P. -P. So you can see this, which is developed by the Apache Friends. Uh, you can see in the dialog box here also what it is. It is developed by Apache Friends, consisting mainly of the mainly of Apache HTTP server, Maria database, and interprets for scripts written in PHP and Perl programming language. So you can see the download option here, click on that. Now again, we have different uh, configuration and download options for various uh, operating systems that are using. So if you're using XAMPP for Windows, we have three different versions of it. Similarly for Linux, for OS also we have. So since we're installing it on Windows, we are only concerned with this. And we have the latest version of it, which is 8.1.2. So we'll be installing that on our system. So click on download 64 bit. So we have successfully uh, downloaded that. Just wait for some time to install it on your system. It may take a while, again, uh, depending upon internet. And uh, so let's just wait for it to download. In the meantime, guys, if you're finding this tutorial informative and helpful, make sure to leave a like and share it with your friends and colleagues also so that it will reach uh, to most of the people, you know, who are learning PHP and MongoDB. And if, even if there's someone who is at a beginner level who is trying to learn something new, it will be quite helpful. So make sure you, uh, you know, share it with as many as people for a better reach. So as you can see, we have successfully uh, downloaded the XAMPP on our uh, system. And then uh, once you, after the download, if you click the file, it will open in this way, which is, uh, for an antivirus running, you can, uh, I will ask for continue with installation. Just click on yes. Now you have the setup page for the XAMPP. Uh, just click on next. So basically all these files will be, uh, you know, installed on your system like MySQL, FileZilla, FTP server, Perl, PHMI, admin. So these are all the various components that you get quite handy also when you are uh, installing the XAMPP on your system. So click on next. So it will ask to uh, save the location on which you want to save your uh, XAMPP folder. So it is basically saving in a C drive. Click on next. Error for this, which says the selected folder is not empty. Please select a different folder. So now I've already installed the XAMPP on my folder. I'll just uh, go through the uh, you know technique on how to overcome this warning. So let's just go to the XAMPP folder on our system. So if you're facing that issue, uh, just basically delete all the, uh, you know, files that is already, if you have a folder named as XAMPP, just delete all the files in that or else you can change the location from this also. So I'm now taking uh, the location as desktop here. So click on next. It will ask for language preference. Click on next again. And setup is now ready to begin installing uh, XAMPP on your computer. Just click on next and it will automatically uh, complete your setup and installation. So XAMPP is now successfully, uh, you know, uh, installed on our system. So just search for it and it will directly open if you have already installed. Uh, as you can see in the XAMPP control panel, you have various services and modules like Apache, MySQL, FileZilla, Mercury, Tomcat and etc. Now after installing XAMPP on your system, next we will be installing Composer. Now we need a tool which can be used to install libraries as well as manage application dependencies and for that composer does a great job for uh, you know application level package uh, manner for php which has gained immense popularity and it also became you know the standard managing dependency in php application so you can say it, uh, php uh, you can say composer is basically a dependency managed tool which allows you to declare the libraries your project depends on and it will manage them for you on your system. So again, let's go to Google and type Composer. 
So you can also uh, know what exactly Composer added from the dialog box here. So just click on Composer. So you'll find this page here and you'll also have a download option. Click on that. Now scroll down a bit. Uh, no need to scroll down. Uh, so you can see download and run Composer setup.exe. Just click on that. So it will, uh, yeah, it is successfully downloaded now. We'll just click on this file and we'll install it on our system. So once it's installed on your system, we'll have this uh, setup page which will ask for, uh, you know, a developer mode. It's your wish if you want to click on developer mode. So let's just leave it like that. Uh, click on next. Next, you have to choose the path command line which you want to use in order to execute the PHP uh, commands on your system. So make sure that the file is php.exe. And if it is not there, you just have to go to uh, the XAM file which you have in installed it on our system. Uh, just go to XAM. Uh, you have php and down you have php.exe. So make sure it is uh being saved on this path and not on the other part click on next so it's checking for the path, uh, command line and it has successfully uh, chosen the uh, command line so click on this and click on install okay and this is how you can uh, download the composite setup so it will just run the composite install setup script let wait for it some time to complete the installation process so it says that uh, as a last resort, you may need to restart your system. So click on that and restart your system once again. So we have also successfully uh, you know, installed Compose on our system. So let's just wrap up what we have done till now. We have basically added the MongoDB driver extension using the PECL uh, command, uh, which you have again downloaded it on system. Next, you have downloaded XAMPP. Next, we have also installed Composer on our system. Now, let us understand how to configure PHP in a way that will allow a connection to MongoDB in the Windows environment. Now, we have uh, downloaded a file from uh, you know PECL command line, right? Which is which is PHP underscore MongoDB dot DLL. So, just copy this file and now go to XAMPP stored in C drive, right? So, click on the XAMPP folder, click on PHP and in PHP you will find ext folder name click on that and paste it over here all right so as you can see I have pasted the PHP mongodb.dll file on my system now next you have to search for php.ini file in order to uh, you know paste the extension for the mongodb database so just search for php ini in the search box uh, I think we have here itself. So you have php.ini development, php.ini production. Now, in some cases, you will directly find php.ini file or else you will find it this way. So make sure that it is just the file which is above the php.ini development file as in this case. So click on this. Now you will find a series of extension here which is uh, saved in the notepad. So you need to basically uh, add the following file with the extension. So search for the extension, uh, you know, files where they are saved. Just scroll down a bit slowly. You will find it. Uh, I think scroll down more a bit, or else you can just search for. Uh, all right, we have got the file here. So now what you have to do is you have to basically. Uh, I have already uh, installed it my, on my system, right? So I'm just showcasing you know how to do it again. So you have this extension dot php. So beforehand you won't have this. So you have to uh, write type extension and pay, just paste the file which is php mongodb dot dll and you have to save the file. Now saving the file is must otherwise it will not reflect in your system. So I think we are good to go now. We have successfully installed the mongodb extension driver in our system. Now we are good to go and we can write the uh, code on our PHP line. Now you can use any sort of editor for writing the PHP code be it notepad, be it sublime text or even visual code. So firstly let us run the uh, you know XAM file, we will run the Apache system. So as you can see it has successfully started. Now all the data that is being uh, you know written or configured is stored in the local host. So if you press local host and before that we need to create a, you know a folder on which we are working because uh, it will basically tell uh, where the data is being stored so go to XAMPP again 
XAM and there you will file HT docs. Now in this you can create a new folder. Now I already created a new folder which is new.mongodb. You can create a new folder again as well. So let's just create uh, another one here. Click on new folder. So let's say it has mongodb php. All right. So click on this. It says folder is empty. Now, if you want to find what is happening in this, you have to basically go to uh, web search, type localhost slash and mention the folder name which you have taken that is mongodb php. Again, put the backslash and enter. So as you can see, we have uh, index of mongodb php here and there is no uh, files yet that is saved here, right? Now we'll write a basic program now using the PHP. Now for that you need a prior uh, knowledge on HTML because the code written is PHP is also similar to that. So I'm going to use the notepad only for my editor. So just open the notepad. Now this might be a bit confusing because I am using uh, the PHP, uh, you know, commands. So it might be a bit confusing. So just understand how it is going and how it is working actually. So first we have to provide the header file which is given by greater than symbol and question mark and write PHP. And again in the end we basically have a question mark and the uh, greater than symbol again to in order to close the tag. Now in between we have to write our uh, you know code for in order to create a new collection in our MongoDB database. So firstly I am going to uh, give the necessary actions which is uh, required mention the vendor slash authorized sorry auto load dot php all right close it mention semicolon and then you have to provide the client connection right now what we are doing is we are basically connecting mongodb with database now in general we have the local host of mongodb is 27017 so that is what we will be connecting so the syntax for that is dollar sign client is equals to new mongodb backslash client Make sure the C is a uh, capital, otherwise it will throw an error here. Client. And open the square brackets, mention double quotes, provide the location which is mongodb, uh, colon, backslash, localhost, which is 27017. Now if you want to know what is your localhost connection, you can just simply open MongoDB shell and you can see it, MongoDB compass, sorry. You can see that uh, what the localhost uh, name is there on your uh, system that is installed. So let's connect it. So as you can see, we have localhost is 27017, which is almost uh, same for most of the system, I reckon. So let's just get back to our code again here. Now I'm going to create a database. Now let's say uh, company, I'm going to take the database name as company DB. Okay. Company DB. And then I'm going to write client. Mention the database name, which is again company DB. All right. Next, I'm going to create a collection. Now, for that, we have to use the tag, which is dollar result one. Okay. So, mention the uh, database that you have chosen, which is company DB. Or mention the arrow symbol. Now, write the keyword, which is create collection. Make sure the C is capital, otherwise, it will throw an error. Okay. Uh, you can give any collection name. So let's take employee collection. So I'm giving it as employee collection as an example here. All right. So let's just close it again. Then 
you have to store this value all right it's not just you have created uh, anything you have just uh, created a collection now in order to store this you are you have to use var dump character here var dump and save the result now we have taken uh, our you know object as result one right so just write the value which is result one so this is basically our code uh, which is basically a beginner level code on how to create a database by connecting it uh, to the MongoDB database and then we are creating a collection employee.collection so let us just save this file on our system so give it a name uh, let's say mongodb1.php make sure it is of the extension .php file and select all files and it should be stored in your uh, you know folder that you have created which is mongodb.php so this should be saved in this folder click on save all right so let us now go to the local host and see whether it is uh, created or not local host uh, the folder name that we have given is mongodb php right click on that so as you can see we have a new file which is mongodb1.php which is created uh, it is saying an error one second so there was a small error in the code i just rectified now when you click on uh, so let's just type again uh, search for it search the folder that you have saved now if you click that you have uh, you know like this which says that object mongodb model based on document storage array object private array one ok dot float which means that is it means that you have successfully created uh, the uh, you know document as well as collection in your mongodb database so let's just verify by going into our database and see whether it is created or not just refresh it and you can see that we have a new company db uh, you know document and that we in that we have created a collection name which is AMP collection and it is reflecting also if you want to check in the mongodb shell also you can just cross verify it uh, so let us uh, write the command show dbs so that we can have an idea on which collections we have so as you can see even in the mongodb shell command line also we have company db which is reflecting in our output so if you use the company db it will say switch to db company db and then let's say if you want to see the collection that are present in that so you can see emp collection is reflecting in that so we have successfully created a documental collection using the php that is we have used the mongodb driver extension and we have written the script in uh, in php format so now whatever you are hosting the application that you are hosting on your web page all the data is also simultaneously stored in the mongodb database so this is how you can create a database and collection using php so in this tutorial we have just covered on uh, the basics on how to install and configure the mongodb driver extensions and how to create a basic uh, document and collection in this a session so stay tuned for the next tutorial where we will try to insert some uh, fields into our collection that we have created so that brings us to the end of today's session guys thank you for watching the video guys if you found this tutorial informative and helpful give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues if you have any further queries regarding any of the topics and concepts covered in today's session Feel free to let us know in the comment section below and a team of experts will be more than happy to help resolve all your queries at the earliest. Stay tuned to the channel for more such amazing content and don't forget to subscribe to our channel it's Simply Code. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until next time, stay safe and keep coding.